What is going on everybody? It is Noah McCrow. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first video, I do mobile car detailing and I have a real estate license here in Texas. And the channel focuses on both. I'm just documenting my journey to success. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button down below and the like button and let's get into it. Today we're actually detailing a 2017 Ford Escape and I have a bunch of stuff I need to go through. In fact, during the COVID, I found some gloves. How amazing is that, right? They didn't even charge me a bunch of money for them. Five bucks. There's no water tank. My whole setup's a little bit different, but today I'm gonna walk you through how you can detail a car using their electricity and their water. This is the pressure washer I'm gonna be using, but before we even dive into this, I gotta move a bunch of stuff out of the way. It's just gotten stacked on because, you know, roommates and all that. So this video is gonna be kind of similar to the one video I made about a year ago, and that is when I made oval car detailing day in the life video right but my life is a little bit different than it was a year and a half ago i have some food delivery bags here i'll probably make a video on this i figured out a way to make 20 bucks an hour consistently when i don't have details and that's the way to do it delivering food got some goodies in here to show you guys so i have all my towels in this drawer and then I have my interior detailing tools, brushes, and then I keep my polisher down here with a couple other um, applicators. I don't know why this is in here. It's been, I would say, three weeks since my last detail. I don't get them that consistently yet because I'm still working on my website. I don't really enjoy detailing as much as I used to, so I don't go out of my way to try to get as many details as I can get. I'm mostly just prepping to join the military because that's my goal that I have set for myself. What I'm doing now, since it's been like three weeks, is kind of just getting an inventory of what I got, what I need to refill. So far, it's just my phone cannon because we're gonna do an exterior and an interior detail. And then I have my carpet shampoo. I have some McGuire Synthetic Express Wax, which is almost gone. My What's it called? Citrus Face Cleaner. This is a leather scent. Glass Cleaner. ONR. Optimal No Rinse. So I kind of have all my chemicals just stacked right in there. And then I'll tie down strap all this stuff right in the back. And this is just my like auxiliary box that I keep other stuff I'm not really using that often in here. This I use very often. I almost forgot my foam can, so that would be bad. Adam's in here. I don't really use the Adam's that much. I mean, it's okay. It's not my favorite, but I'll definitely use it. We'll go with the tire shine and eco wheel cleaner this time. So boom, close this bad boy up. I'm just gonna use hose water. Again, we're not detailing Rolls Royces here or Ferraris. These aren't gonna water spot the car unless you leave it in the sun intentionally for it to just dry on there. This water is a little rough, but I use O&R and these chemicals soften up the water a lot. The chemicals are hydrophobic, especially, I mean, the soap. I don't really have to worry about the soap. He doesn't have a black car either. Usually a darker color is where you have to worry about those things. These are the same chemicals I have been using from Centex Detail Supply here in Austin. They have some good stuff. It's not their chemicals, but they buy them from another company who just makes some off-brand off chemicals. They're not too bad. But the same chemicals I used in my last video, nothing special. This one I'm gonna dump out because that's really old, the greaser. And I have no more of that McGuire's. I don't like to mix up the rest of an old chemical with another chemical that I'm about to make. I just have another degreaser I'm gonna throw in here instead of this McGuire super degreaser, which is also really good. And I hope you guys see that you don't really need much to start a detailing business or at least make money detailing cars. Just start. Use some simple green. Go to AutoZone. You know, just to get the basics. So I started when I was 16 using some turtle wax and fuck, what else? What was it? Armor all. So armor all and turtle wax are what I used to use to detail cars. And I used to detail my teacher's cars, just take them from school. I had one who let me keep her car all weekend 
Very brave of her, by the way, to let a teenager keep her minivan all weekend. And I would just use armor all and turtle wax. So that's how you really need to start, and some confidence. All right guys, it's supposed to be triple digits today, so I'm gonna start this thing up and uh, go fill up my gallon of water buy some sunscreen because I'm gonna die out here if I don't. Mileage update for you guys. We are at 299,000 miles. She's not running as good as she was, but she runs every day, that's what matters. And the AC is ice cold. So the main benefit of driving this truck, key comes out, boom, I'm gonna keep it locked. That's my laundry for later, don't mind that. We're gonna grab some water. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. 229 or $2. This water's really good, I'm gonna spend the 25 cents. Good, good. I can't for you, go ahead, man. I got it. Are you sure? Bro? I'm a GC. I got it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Shout out to that man at the gas station who just bought me a gallon of water. I appreciate you, bro. You're the best. He's like, I'm a GC. General contractor. He's like, no, it's all good. I'll get your water. So I ain't going to say no to that. All right, guys. We are pretty close. We're around the corner from the customer's house. All right, here's our car right there. What I'm gonna do is just park right up here by this curb. Try to hide all the dents and ugly parts of my car. <laughs> and I'm supposed to text him when I'm here, so. All right, guys. So we're on location. And the first thing I'm gonna do actually is put on some sunscreen because I'm just right under the sun. And I'll get pink real fast. Hey there, buddy. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. So I quoted him $200 for it over the phone because this is a compact SUV. And he said it wasn't too bad in the inside, normal wear and tear, which is pretty much what I'm seeing right here. It doesn't smell bad in here. It doesn't look like there's a lot of dirt in the carpet or fabric back here. The plastic isn't full of a bunch of dirt and grime. <laughs> Let's go to the back. And of course, leather seats, which are really easy to clean. These door panels are super straightforward. All plastic, very easy to clean. The only thing that worries me here is this carpet. This fabric is really cheap in the Fords. So a lot of that dirt is going to make that fabric kind of fluff up a little bit. And then in the crevices of the leather, get all this cleaned. I can see a little bit of greasiness there. I don't know if it's sweat or bunch of farts that made it all sticky. I don't know, but that's why we wear gloves. Going to the front seat here, everything looks pretty normal. Again, the same consistent amount of dirt right there. There's no cracks or tears in the leather. Nothing too bad. This is a normal wear and tear, normal amount of dirt for this car. So 200 is the quote. And I'm giving him a military discount because I support the troops. So I'm gonna save him some 20 bucks. I'm gonna pause this video with you guys, take some photos real quick, and then I'll meet you uh, when I hook up the hose and we'll get this bad boy done. All right, so I got my photos, video done. It's always good to take video and photo just for the liability. I think I told you guys a story one time where I had a guy say that my bad, I was trying to grab some sunscreen. I had this one guy, he didn't say anything about his car. It was his BMW and he was in a wealthy area. He had this nice BMW SUV I did. I think it was a, what's it, 
I don't even know BMWs that well, but it was a BMW 5 Series SUV or something like that. And I remember getting done with the detail and he's like, yeah, it looks great, thank you very much. And he tipped me and the next day he's like, hey, I know you took my pliers, my sets of pliers and $100 out of my car. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? He's like, I don't have you on video, but I know it was you. And I was like, I don't have to tell you, dude. So always take photos, make sure you're good on that part. I mean, for the most part, I trust people. What's the saying? You give them the benefit of the doubt. Business, you always treat people with kindness and respect. And for the most part, you know, they're gonna treat you the same. But there are those people, you know? Okay, here I am saying, go ahead, use customers, hoses, water. Well, this is gonna happen sometimes, guys. Worst case scenario happened, I blew up his hose. So, no big deal, he's in a meeting right now. So what we're gonna do is just go to the store real quick. I'm gonna leave my stuff here. I'm gonna go buy a hose and I can give him some money back. It's not a big deal. It's just, it's all about how you react. When you're looking at the water outlet, if you just get a bad feeling about things, which I had a bad feeling about this hose. I honestly should not have used the hose. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use it. It's probably gonna work. I should be good. But if you guys have used these hoses, it's like the pocket hose, as seen on TV, one of those. And it like grows when water's inside of it. This one is all brittle from the sun. And it was already, it's seen some, some time, okay? I looked at this hose, like, don't you do it. Don't blow up. And then I'm letting the pressure out of the pressure washer and the hose gets a kink in it and the pressure washer end of it. And so the water starts building up in the hose, I see it. And then all of a sudden a big bowl just comes out of nowhere. And I'm like, no dude, it's like pop. And I'm like, fuck. All right, go turn off the water. And now I gotta go to the store and go buy a hose. But again, it's gonna set me back like 30 minutes, but shit happens. All right guys, here we are at my local Walmart. All right, we're just about here. 30 pack for 10 bucks is not bad. You guys can come to Walmart. Uh, hose, hose, hose. Where the hose at? Yeah, well, they didn't really give me much options. This is what I just blew up, so I'm gonna go with one of these. So the thing with this hose too, it's only 10 bucks, but what breaks on it is this plastic end piece. That's what I broke last time, so stay weary of that. And a really obvious, easy solution to get around blowing up customers' hoses is just to have your own quality hose that you can use on your details that you carry with you, especially if you plan to use the customer's water outlet. I just haven't gone out and bought one. I wanted to risk right. it and just use their hose because I was cheap and a little bit lazy the day before. I just didn't want to go to Walmart and buy a hose. So here I am paying for the hose like I should have the day before, but it is what it is. All right, there's the bucket. Let's see if I can make it. Ugh. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear me as well because you're coming through my AirPods. Uh, it is way too hot, my phone's gonna overheat. Uh, let me show you what I'm doing. So, I'm taking my all-purpose cleaner. That goes to the rubber right here. I'm scrubbing the rubber with this white brush. Very easy. This is my degreaser and road grime dissolver. I'm spraying this up in the wheel well, and this wheel well is plastic. The ones on the rear are the fabric. There's fabric wheel wells and there's plastic wheel wells. This road grime dissolver is gonna get in the fabric, loosen up the dirt, I'm gonna pressure wash it out. It's also gonna get in this plastic, loosen up the dirt, and I'm gonna pressure wash it off, okay? And then I have a brush to get into the lug nuts, a brush to get into the spokes and the face of the wheel, and a brush to get into the barrel of the rim. And the barrel, behind the spokes okay the challenge with this is these brushes are dirty so i rinse them off but even after i still do the wheels it leaves behind the grime and in this hot sun it's literally drying the second i put it down so 
I'm sweating bullets out here. I'm gonna do these wheels, finish them up. I think I re need to redo this driver's side and then we can move on to the wash process. See you guys here in a second. So I just finished the wash. It looks like it's been done for a minute, but I literally just finished it. It's just so hot. The ground evaporates the water like instantly. The only thing that I'm not happy with, uh, there's a lot of cracks right here. And you can see this is like a plastic piece on top of a panel, which would be the rear hatch. And a lot of dirt builds up in there. So it just keeps dripping dirt, dripping dirt, dripping dirt, no matter how many times you wash it. And then in the wheels here, the wheel cleaner was not as effective as I would like it to be. So there's still a lot of dirt in these rims. So uh, one of these moments that, you know, you wish they had stock wheels because it's a little easier to clean. But everything else came out good. I felt the condition of the paint. It's not rough. I'm using just a really fine clay to get the stuff that will make the paint not bead water. So uh, when you clay a car and you go over the body panels, it's gonna pick up any road grime or anything in the pores of the paint. But we're not doing iron removal. We're not doing a crazy three-step paint correction. We're just gonna wax it. So when it's clayed, nice and easy, just you can put some wax on it and it's not gonna leave a bunch of marring and marks that, you know, obviously comes with cleaning a car. So, all right, I'm gonna keep doing this. Okay guys, it's been a few hours at this point. And a lot's been done. So I played it, give it a final rinse and applied the wax with a microfiber, I don't know what you wanna call it, just an applicator. It's a little microfiber brick. Good. All the stuff that's blowing out of it is bugs, it looks like. Those weren't even interesting. Okay. So, what's left to do on it now is I went around and I dressed all the plastic. I have a spray dressing I spray on there. It looks splotchy right there, but it's not done drying and absorbing into the plastic. And I went around and sprayed it all along the bottom. I like this because it doesn't build up a bunch of dirt or get greasy. It looks really clean, especially on the Ford plastics. That's what I use on them. The Ford plastic is probably like my favorite to dress. It just comes out pretty good. And then now I'm going to work my way inside, starting with these door jams, which I've already pressure washed out and cleaned with a brush and all-purpose cleaner. So I'll go around. Where's the brush? It's somewhere. But I'll use this and then I have, looks like a paintbrush. And I go into these crevices right here and knock out all the dirt that's in the hinges as well as the electronic uh, weather tubing. I don't know what you want to call it, these things. So it holds the electronics that go to this door, the wiring, whatever. So you go from the door jams, we're going to work our way into the inside, starting from the back. So I'm going to remove all these mats out and go to town. I'll see you guys here in a minute. Okay guys, I went around, made sure the dressing was a little, a little more consistent. I used an old rag, so I went around. The wheel arches here, made of plastic, all the trim made of plastic. Just grabbed a rag that I'm gonna throw away, unless I can wash it. I have a bunch of laundry I'm gonna do tonight. So I moved all the seats forward in the front, back, fold them down and move the sub out of the way. So we're gonna get a good vacuum in, and then after the vacuum, I'm gonna grab my hairbrush. Thank God I bought a new one, because mine was destroyed. Let me show you guys something that's gonna save your life. Open this bad boy up right here. Grab this. Get yourself one of these brushes. I'm gonna put a link in the description for not this brush exactly, but the one that I had before this on Amazon, and you guys go buy it. But they're super cheap, and this thing, Get rid of all the hair in every single car with uh you know pet hair or even like uh, excuse me i'm about to sneeze even with these uh plants i don't know what you want to call them not plants but you know leaves and seeds that fly in when the windows open it gets that stuff out <laughs> damn man okay so as i was saying it'll get this stuff out you just simply brush it right Check it out, now it's an easy pile to sweep up. And these things work better when they're new. Obviously when all these little rubber fingers 
or man, it's 100 degrees. Give me some slack here, guys. The things, the things. Once these wear down, it's not gonna work as good. So make sure you always keep a good new brush. Damn, I'm sounding like Joe Biden over here. By the, go, you know the, you know the thing. Got about two and a half hours left on this car, guys. I'm gonna finish up this back and the interior. And before I even clean this leather, I'm gonna vacuum it out. Probably move it into the garage. Actually, it's starting to get pretty cool now. It's gonna, it's essentially gonna open the pores up in the leather and make it a little bit more weak. And I don't wanna do that when it's hot because heat already makes things expand. So it'll make things easier to tear for things to pop like the hose. Okay, see you guys here in a bit. I want to give you guys a visual of how it looks after I vacuum it, go over the plastics. Okay guys, I never thought this moment would come. I finished with this car. I'm pretty beat. I'm pretty tired guys. That was the hottest detail I've ever done. That was definitely easy up temperatures for sure. I think it got up to 100, but the humidity just killed me. I finished my gallon of water in like two hours. Oh, man, I've definitely worked harder than that before. Like more back breaking work and heat like that, but it's been a while. It's definitely been a while. Here's the finished product. On the exterior, at least. We'll get to the inside for in a second, actually. So my full details, I know I've gotten a lot of questions about this. They only consist of the inside and the outside, not the engine bay. And what I do for the inside is I get a vacuum done. I shampoo all the carpets. And by shampoo, I mean dry shampoo all the carpets. It's on my website. And basically, I'm just ruffling up the fibers in the carpet and releasing all the dirt and whatever else is in the fibers of the carpet without getting it soaking wet with an extractor. I just use a multitude of brushes as well as my polisher and I can get rid of the majority of the dirt and satisfy the client's needs without getting an extractor. I know it seems like I'm out of breath guys, but I'm just really tired. I swear I'm not out of shape. I've been running my miles every single day to get ready for the military. I'm just I'm tired. Man, uh, leather and cloth seats, leather gets, you know, obviously leather treatment, right? So. The way you clean leather is with a brush or I use a magic eraser. For this one, I use a magic eraser because each leather is different. This one is more like plasticky. It's not a real leather. Uh, it's more man-made, artificial, so I could be a little more rough. Uh, plastic, same thing. Brushes, magic eraser works really good for this. It's just getting all of the dirt and grime that's on this door panel from the five-year-old that is chauffeured back here. So it's not too, not too difficult because once the carpets are taken care of, once the seats are taken care of, the windows, I mean, that's essentially the whole car. You get the cup holders, the electronics done. That's the interior, a detail for me. I actually start with the outside. I should have gone over that first. I start with the wheels. I have another video where I detail the van. I show you how I do with the wheels. I wasn't able to do it today because my phone kept turning off because of the heat. I treat all the plastic, I clean it, I use a water-based, man, the words are just not coming to me right now. But you see this wheel isn't perfect. It's a really hard wheel to clean and I'm just, I'm not gonna sit here all day and get every single piece of dirt out here. I mean, he was really stoked with it before and the wheels look terrible. I went over them a second time and these are just, they're not name brand wheels. So they're a little bit more difficult to clean. Like the finish isn't as strong, so dirt stays on there. Um, going back to the plastics, I dress the plastic, sorry, with water-based dressing. And I do the wheels, I show you in another video, and then I go ahead and use a foam cannon. And once I do the washing, I will use a, a clay mint and clay the car very lightly. I don't leave any marring or love marks which are the scratches going in straight lines because I'm not polishing the car with a full detail. I used to do that, but it's too much work for what I was charging for it. And I wasn't able to get 
better results because I felt like I wasn't being compensated for my time. Hey guys, I'm just finishing up editing the video and I realized that my phone died right at the very end so I did not get any after pictures of the car or any outro to the video. So here I am a day later. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video and check out the other detailing videos I have because the other two are pretty similar and I'm probably going to be having some more coming out soon. So stay tuned guys. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.